2.5, the derivatives of composite functions. So you need to think back to chapter nine um, in the advanced functions course where we talked about composite functions. So that was things like fog and Goff. Remember those? You had to pass that course in order to get here. So I'm sure you're quite familiar with fog and Goff. So all it means is that, that when you have a function, you could have a function that is like f at g at x, where you plugged in some function g at x into the function f at x. So um, if I had a, sum, a function as basic as 1 over x squared minus 3 squared, you could say, oh, this is the parent function, or f at x is 1 over x, and g at x is x squared minus 3 squared. So in other words, all you do was plug all this in for x if f at x was 1 over x. So um, you might want to go back and review that section before you start this, or, or maybe you're quite familiar with it. So what we're looking at here now is a way to find the derivative of a composite function without expanding it. So I'm going to show you a question from your textbook 13a where they give the y in terms of u and u in terms of x. And then I'm going, I'm going to do it using what they call the chain rule. And also with this rule, which is the power of a function rule, which is basically a chain rule, a simplified chain rule, which avoids using composite functions. So I don't normally teach this part to my class because you can still do everything using this rule. But I'll show you how this works because it is quite interesting and maybe your teacher might um, put a lot of emphasis on it. It's also good for later on, like I said with the last lesson about substitution of u. So let's take a look at this and we're going to use the chain rule first. So we have y equals this and u equals this and you're trying to find dy dx. Now you can see that this function is written in terms of u. So I can't take the derivative of it in terms of x. And that's why you take the derivative of y with respect to u. So if I do dy du, and then I do du dx, then I can, well, you can see that if you, if you sort of multiplied these things together, if I multiplied these, I could get rid of the du's and I would end up with dy dx. And that is basically what you're doing here. So we have a little bit of lighting issue here today. As always, there's sunshine, maybe. Doesn't usually sunshine, no sunshine around here. Okay, so let's do this. So what's dy du? And remember that's just y prime, where I'm using u for my variable. So dy du is going to be six u minus five. It's that easy. And what's derivative of u, the function u, with respect to x? So du dx, the derivative of this, is just 2x. So that's pretty easy. Now the problem comes when you're trying to evaluate it at a certain point. Now remember that dy dx, dy dx is going to be 6u minus 5 and I'm going to um, multiply that by the du dx, which is 2x. Now I can't substitute in 2 for u because that's when x is 2, not u. So when x is 2, that means u is going to be, and I have to evaluate it here. So I plug in 2 for x and I would get 4 minus 1 is 3. So u would be 3. So dy dx is going to be 6 times 3 minus 5 in brackets times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So 18 minus 5 is 13 and 13 times 4 is 52. So dy dx, and I probably should have written in here when x equals 2 dy dx equals 6u minus 5 times 2x 
and I plug in the u being 3 and the x being 2. Now, like I said, you could do this <coughs> by substituting in x squared minus 1 in for u like we've done before. So I could write this as y equals 3 times x squared minus 1 squared minus 5 times x squared minus 1 plus 2. Now if I took the derivative, I could take the derivative entirely with respect to x because I have substituted my u with x squared minus 1. So I wouldn't need to do this evaluation. So let me just see if I can get rid of some of these sunlight streams. Maybe it's even worse with a lot other light. Oh dear, lighting issues are my the bane of my existence here. Okay, so let's take the derivative of this. So y prime equals, so I do 2 times 3 is 6. I leave the inside alone. I reduce the exponent by 1, so that's to 1. And the derivative of the inside is 2x. And then I have, um, this would be, if I expanded this, it's probably easier to see it if you expand it, because you don't. Well, it's just easier. So this part here would be minus 5x squared plus 5 plus 2. Right? I could replace this with this. So the derivative, these are just constants, and the derivative of minus 5x squared is minus 10x. So now if I evaluate y prime when x equals 2, I would get 4 minus 1 is 3, times 6 is 18, and 2 times 2 is 4, and minus 10 times 2 is minus 20, and that would be 72 minus 20 is 52. So you see how you're getting the same answers, whether I use dy du du dx, or the Leibniz notation here, and using the chain rule, or if I just use the power of a function rule here. So... This is, this is pretty quick, though, right? Especially if you have two really complicated functions, this might be the way to go, but I don't see too many of those um, down the road for you. So it's whatever your teacher wants you to learn. Okay, what I do want to do is a couple of more of the difficult questions that involve a product rule with a chain rule and a quotient rule with a chain rule. So we're not going to use Leibniz notation. We're going to use the power of function, which is also a type, a special case of the chain rule. I've always called it chain rule because it's it involves a chain, right? You do this and you do the inside, do this, do the inside. Okay, so let's go ahead with this one because some of these require a bit of simplification that you might not see. Or, you know, you'll turn the back of the book and go, oh, miss, I don't know the answer. I don't know how they got this answer. So I'm going to show you how to simplify these more dif difficult questions. Excuse me. Okay, so it, this is a product, right? I have something times something. So I'm going to do the first times the derivative of the second. So that's going to be make brackets. Okay, so you know that you've multiplied. So it's 2 times x cubed plus 3. Reduce it by 1 is 1, the inside is 3x squared. So that's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So I have 3, then I have x squared plus 3 squared, and the derivative of the inside is 2x. Don't forget to do that. So now what you need to do is simplify. So the first thing you want to watch out for is this plus sign in the middle. Okay, so you're factoring about this. Simplify the little basic monomials and constants here first. So you have 6x squared, and I have an x squared plus 3 cubed, and I have an x cubed plus 3. And on this side, we have some of the very same things over here. We have 3 times 2 is 6x. Now I'm going to write the x squared plus 3's first, so we get them in the same order as the other one. So I have x squared plus 3 squared, and then I have 
an x cubed plus 3 squared. Okay, so now you want to look left and right. What can I take from each of them? So they both have a 6x, right? So let's put that down first. Okay, I have an x squared plus 3 cubed and an x squared plus 3 squared. So the most I can take from both is an x squared plus 3 squared. Now I look at the x cubed plus 3. I have one of them here and I have two of them here. So I can take one of them from both. Okay, so those are your common factors. Put a big bracket and now divide this. See what you had left over. So I took out 6x. There is 1x left over here from the 6x squared. I took two of those, but I still have one left of those. So x squared plus 3. And I took all of these. And then plus, don't forget your plus sign here, you'll get all confused. So that's this was from this side, and now I'm looking over here. So I took the 6x out, that's gone. I have 6x squared plus 3 squared, that one's gone. I have one of these, and I had two of those. So I still have one more of these over here, x cubed plus 3. You can leave it in brackets if you want. Okay, so now that I've got this factor out front here, I can just write that out. And then I have to simplify what's left on this side. So this gives me x cubed plus 3x plus x cubed plus 3. So x cubed plus 3x, x cubed plus 3x is going to be 2x cubed. So I have 2x cubed and I have 1 3x and I have a 3. And that's perfectly simplified and factored. Okay, so again, the the big the big part you have to be careful about is this plus sign here. Okay, don't lose it along the way. Okay, so let's do one of the quotient rules. Um, more complicated quotient rule, because look, I've got all this stuff underneath, and I have this to the power of 4. So... The power rule for a chain rule, or the simplified chain rule, says I'm going to put the 4 in front. I'm going to leave everything else alone. x squared minus 3, x squared plus 3. I'm going to reduce the exponent by 1. Okay, so that's, that's the first part of your calculation here, your derivative. And now I'm going to make another set of brackets to take the derivative of the inside using the Hody High rule. So I have Ho, put it in brackets, okay? D high, the derivative of the top is 2x. If you didn't put it in brackets, you might forget that you had to multiply this as well by 2x, right? So here's Ho, D high, minus high, D Ho, same, over Ho squared. So I have x squared plus 3 squared. And there you go. Now this isn't simplified either. And what you want to watch out for here is, well, let's, let's do this part here first. So we're going to leave this. We know there's lots to simplify on the other side. And these are cubed. So here in the numerator, you can't do anything about the denominator, but we can simplify this. So we have 2x cubed plus 6x minus, now watch your negatives, right? So 2x cubed, so minus 2x cubed, and this is minus 6x minus minus is plus 6x all over x squared plus 3 squared. Now, you can see that the x cubes are going to cancel out. And I have 12x. So I'm going to bring this way up here because I didn't leave enough room. Too much room for that one, not enough room for this one. Okay, so this is what I have right now. I have 4. I have. Now I'm going to break this. Well, no, I didn't make a nice bracket for it yet. So let's leave it. x squared minus 3 
x squared plus 3 cubed times 6x plus 6x is 12x, and I have an x squared plus 3 squared. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but there's one more thing you can do. And that is, because this is cubed, that means this thing is cubed. Let me change it here. So I could have this cubed over this cubed, and that gets rid of this one, right? So in the denominator now, you can see I have the very same thing here and here. So I have x squared plus 3 cubed, x squared plus 3 squared. That means I have x squared plus 3 to the fifth power. In the numerator, I have 4 times 12x, so that's 48x. And then I have this thing that's cubed, x squared minus 3 cubed. And this is all over x squared plus 3 now to the power of 5. So often you have to do that much work to get to a really nice conclusion. And when we get into graphing um, derivative or dra graphing functions, you're going to have to find the derivative to find where the slope is zero. So you need to have good skills for simplifying. Okay, so that's the lesson from 2.45 on composite functions. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to subscribe.